the cheapest 1080p capture you can buy. How good is it? I'll find out on Thrifty AV. I picked up this 1080p USB 2 capture device on eBay for about 17 bucks. So that's pretty cheap. I've seen a couple of reviewers go over it so far. Epost Vox did a video and more recently Lodo Tech did a video about it. But I'm going to test different gear than they did with this device. For gaming I'm going to use this Atari Flashback 9. I'm going to capture some VHS footage with this Magnavox dual VHS DVD recorder that outputs an HDMI. I'm going to see what happens with a 4K signal using this Roku. And I have several cameras I can try out including this Panasonic uh, HCV770 and my Campark V30. Let's back up and check out the unboxing. Let's take a look at this box. It says HDMI video capture. Put a big old sticker over the product picture here. Input max resolution 4K. But what I've been reading is it doesn't actually support that. We'll test it. Uh, support max output resolution 1080p. It says supports most acquisition software including VLC which I have. Uh, Windows, Android, Mac OS. Okay, let's get into the box. HDMI video capture instructions. Here's the capture device itself. Here's the input, the HDMI input, and of course USB 2 output. I have the capture device plugged into my USB 2 port. I'm going to launch the Windows camera app. And as you see, there's the screen for my Atari flashback. Okay, right now it's set to 1080p, which is what I want. I just discovered something interesting about this capture device. If I'm not actively feeding a signal to it, it gives me color bars. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. I'm going to record some of these color bars and I'm going to see how true they are. How about adventure? All right, adventure. I'm going to grab this key. There is definitely some lag when I'm playing this game. Oh, there's a dragon. Ah! I almost got eight. Okay, there's a magnet. There's the chalice. I gotta grab the chalice. Am I recording all this? Yes. Awesome. Alright, I won. So the Atari flashback works. The Atari Flashback outputs 720p. I was capturing at 1080p, so I got a black frame around everything when I captured it. That was fine. It let me put two things on my screen at the same time without too much adjustment. Now I want to try recording a MacroVision encoded VHS tape using this capture device. Okay, that is the uh, screensaver for my Magnavox. When I pop this tape in, it should disappear. Let's go ahead and record. All right, there is my VHS playing. I'm going to take it on faith that I'm getting audio here. This is not outputting audio, and I think it might have something to do with the capture device. I can only show a few seconds of this because of potential copyright reasons. But I am going to show a few seconds of this footage that it captured. I had the aspect ratio set to 16 by 9, so it was stretching the 4 by 3 out. That would be an adjustment that I need to make on the VCR, not on the capture device. Now let's try out the Roku Ultra, which was set up to output 4K. All right, the clock screensaver is a good sign. It helps to have internet plugged into a Roku if you want to stream. Hopefully it'll be something family friendly that pops up here, we'll see. Looks like uh, something about Clint Eastwood. During the second year on Rawhide, Eastwood becomes involved with actress Roxanne Tunis. 
This is a Panasonic HCV770. The HDMI on it is micro HDMI, so I have to use a special HDMI cable for it. And it is a little bit short. But I'm going to go ahead and plug it into this capture device. Using the HDMI capture device, I'm now essentially using the HCV770 as a webcam. Right now I'm recording on the Microsoft Cam software, but I could just as easily use Zoom or some kind of a video conferencing software using this same approach. So I would say this is a success. With the HCV770, I was seeing menu stuff like the little pause button and face framing. So that can be turned off on the menu in the camera. My Campark V30 Action Cam has the same HDMI input, so I'm going to go ahead and power this on. The internal microphone on the Campark V30 did not function through the video capture device, so I finally found something that did not entirely work. So if you're using this capture device with a camcorder, be sure you turn off the on-screen display output or you'll see the on-screen display menu. If you're using this capture card with a Campark V30 action cam, the internal microphone's not going to work. You'll have to use your own microphone when you do the capture. Now right now I'm capturing straight off of my main camera, my HCX1000. I turned off the on-screen display menus earlier. Right now you're watching me through the capture device. Now, just for comparison's sake, let's see what it looks like now. You're now watching me recorded from the camera in 4K. Let's go back to the capture device. This is 1080p footage. It's been upscaled to 4K for this upload, but it was 1080p footage captured on this computer over here. But overall, I've been very happy with this HDMI capture device. It's worked on pretty much everything that I wanted to use it with. I don't blame it for the audio not working on this. I think that's a Cam Park issue, not an issue with this device. I will be using this in some future videos to capture HDMI signals. I already have a few ideas that I could use it for, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel, and remember, stay thrifty everyone.